what a wonderful piece of music that is. It is, of course, Jupiter from Holst's The Planets. Good, very, very good afternoon to you. I'm Simon Moore, and this is Arts in Focus on Fine Music 102.5. And our focus today is going to be on the Sydney Conservatorium of Music. And I'm very delighted to be joined once again by their dean, Anna Reid. Anna, a very warm welcome back to Fine Music 102.5. Oh, thanks, Simon. It's good to be back again. So uh, I, dare sus- I, I dare say that after, you know, everything that's been going on last time, things haven't exactly stood still. Well, no, you always hope that there's going to be a quiet time, but there never is at the conservatory. To catch up with paperwork? <laughs> oh, yeah. I have to write that into my diary, <laughs> catch up with paperwork <laughs> time and the playing Pokemon time. That's all very difficult. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so no, no the, the con is just always hopping. We've just come back from holidays. Well, the students have come back from holidays, that is. Um, but while we were out of the building, the Sydney International Piano Competition was in the building. Mm. So every room was full. The pianos were being played. Uh, just hundreds and hundreds of people listening to this amazing music. So, so it's, not just, it's not just the auditorium that's been hide out as it were it's also the rest of the facilities oh, oh pretty much you know all of those pianists have to practice and uh, have mm. their you know a good instrument to play on so yes they they, they had taken over totally so uh, tell me about the the lunch break concerts because they're uh, i think something that's um one of the unsung heroes of the con because it's a great uh uh, a, a great thing for people to be able to get along to at lunchtime. Yeah, well, one of the things the students always want is more performance time. Uh, every want time and you need, have a, I guess, mm, Well, yeah. they, they do, because this is going to be their art. They need mm. to be comfortable in front of an audience. And one of the best ways that uh, they have their practice uh, is to play in front of large audiences. And our lunchtime concerts seem to do that. So they're on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. And the Wednesdays and Thursdays concerts are our tertiary students. And each grouping of them gets a go. So it might be the strings one week, it might be chamber music, the week after that it could be organ students last week it was uh, guitars uh, so each time it's something different so mm. if you plan to come um, look up which one it is but actually it doesn't matter uh, because they're all amazing it's a surprise it is a surprise <laughs> <laughs> um, but the students pretty much devise themselves what they're going to play for those concerts mm-hmm. uh, and they last for an hour and they're free well they're sort of free it's a gold coin donation at the door and um, free enough free enough it's free <laughs> enough uh, but because it's at lunchtime uh, we, we get people from uh, the local business area. Uh, mm. We have school groups come in. Um, uh, we, we sometimes have things like probus clubs join us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, people who uh, might have a disability come in. We've got plenty of space for that. But the best thing is it's top class music in the centre of the day, easy in, easy mm. out, wonderful. So uh, the next uh, big event though that's coming up for you, uh, which I'm keen to hear about, is your open day uh, for semester two. Oh, it's, a, it's a totally wonderful day. It um, serves for us a couple of purposes. Uh, the main one, of course, it enables future students to come and see what we're like. So our Open Day is actually part of the University of Sydney's Open Day. And um, so we're represented on the main campus up at mm. Camperdown. But our big events are down at the Sydney Conservatorium where there is something happening all day. There are um, a range of lectures uh, about uh, uh, what it's like to do music education or musicology. Uh, we have booths so you can go and talk to composers about what it's like to study composition or what it's like to do music technology or what about contemporary music, you know, um, how do I learn to write pop songs? Uh, We've got something for everybody there. All of our um, degree programs are represented. But more importantly, there's the music. Mm. Uh, So in every hall, there's music being played by our students. So you can see what it is you come to do when you're a student when, when you're studying as a student at the con. Um, and this time, for something different, uh, we've got our big symphony orchestra playing a, a free concert in the afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, and, and that'll be totally wonderful. It's a, a, a fabulous program, uh, which includes, of course, the planets, the little bit that you've just, just heard. Said, yes. yeah. uh, <laughs> now, I've also got a note down here about um, something that's rather cool. John Williams' bassoon concerto. What's that like? Well, John Williams of Star Wars fame. It, well, well, it is. It's John Williams of Star Wars fame. And um, he wrote this totally stunning bassoon concerto. Yeah. And, and one of our really finest players won uh, the concerto competition, our internal con- concerto competition. And so he's playing, um, Justin, his name is. And it's absolutely beautiful. But whereas the first thing you'll hear on the program um, will be him um, playing John Williams, who's known for Star Wars. And then you're going to hear Holst's Planets, which has got Mars, on which Star Wars music was based. So it sort of has this... Oh, was it indeed? Yeah. Well, any, Inspi- any listener would um, see the yeah, inversions see the inversion. happening there and, okay. and notice it quite clearly, and particularly the rhythms. Um, but the music, the, the bassoon concerto, is something that's quite unusual and something you wouldn't actually expect to think of as a Williams work. So it, it's worth coming in 
to hear everything around it, have a cup of coffee, come into the concert um, and, and listen to the orchestra play. And that open day is on Saturday, the 27th of August from 9am at the Conservatorium and also at the, um, you're also represented, as you said, at the, the main University of Sydney camp, uh, Camperdown campus, I should say. One of the other things I'm, I'm noticing here about um, the open day is master classes. Now, I've always been fascinated by master classes, the, the, this, this idea of sort of sitting in on what is effectively a, a very high level lesson. Is that really what it is? Or what does an observer of a masterclass get out of it? Well, an observer has a unique experience because often uh, if you're a general member of the public, you can't play that instrument. Mm. And so it's quite fascinating hearing how it is um, a young person comes to be able to play. And the fascination is not so much what they do with their fingers or their mouth, but how they respond to the teacher's um, uh, discussion with them Mm. about the music. Um, And masterclasses are really interesting because those masters have done their learning, they've got to the top of their tree, they have insight and inspiration that the young ones are looking for. And I think it's quite funny, sometimes the master says what the teacher has been saying all along, but because the students heard it from somebody else, they suddenly go, ah, that's how it is. And it's quite fun to watch um, something uh, that you hear at the beginning of the class and then you hear it at the end of the class and you hear the progress that's just been made in that short time. Mm. So so it's it's a fascinating experience of how humans interact and how they Mm. work together to improve and change things. Yeah, Yeah. they're they're really great uh, great things to to go along to, regardless of whether you can play the instrument in question or not. Oh, absolutely. And and if you actually play a different one, you can get insights anyway. Yes. You know, a a singer going along to a a wind class can suddenly learn something about breathing that they didn't know. No, yeah. and think about the names yeah. there, indeed. Now, you've got a new um, residency uh, happening at Foundry 616, I believe. Oh, yes, absolutely. The, the jazz ensemble. I, the last, well, the first one that they had I went to, uh, and uh, I, I quite like going to jazz in dark night dives. Um, <laughs> and, but it, it was a wonderful experience seeing, and often it's got our students in them anyway, uh, yeah. but, but this is their whole band in there, and they cram in on this tiny stage, and they just play everybody's socks off. Uh, and uh, so you can get a, an, an astonishing sound out of that, and it's just really fun. It's, it's really lovely to have the conservatory conservatorium going out there and and playing in locations that the community are in which are different from our own um venues yeah. school ones mm. yeah well let's have a little bit more music now um this is uh, a little bit of uh cosi fan uh and uh well we'll hear about, hear about why we're uh, going to be hearing that why we're listening to that in just a moment to find out everything that's going on at the con go to sydney.edu.au slash music
How absolutely divine. Suave sia il vento from Mozart's Così Fan Tutte. And, uh, well, I'm going to let my guest Anna Reid explain why we just heard that. Anna Reid is the Dean of the Sydney Conservatorium of Music. Anna? Thank you. Uh, every semester we put on a fabulous opera with our opera school. Uh, and the aim there always is to uh, get an opera that will suit the voices. The uh, We call them young voices, but I, I guess they're just not yet old, large operatic voices yet. Um, and this particular opera suits them very well. It's because it's about young people falling in love and falling out of love. And mm. so the work a you've familiar just... Theme, a, a familiar theme. A familiar theme, yeah. <laughs> and, and usually, of course, as you've um, seen young people fall in of love, into love and out of love, uh, you also find there's a meddling person in between. Mm. So in the song that you've just heard, we have... Uh, four, well, three young voices all talking about how they love each other, but you know that any second the girls are going to be tested about whether they truly love their guys because they're going to have, you know, sort of identity swaps and it, it's going to be a, you know, a cosmic mess just the way it is in real life, mm. um, except in this case accompanied by fabulous music. So so we're pretty lucky. Um, on the faculty we've got uh, Stephen Mould and Narelle Yeo and uh, Narelle is the director and Stephen the musical director and between them they really can concoct a storm. So, so uh, just earlier this week, I saw a mock-up of the set in a cardboard box um, coming oh, down those to my little office. Ones. Yeah, we, yeah, we cut them out, yeah, and, and yeah. it had all of these little people standing them in them. And as we walked down the corridor, the little people all started falling to the left and falling to the li- to the right. And 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 so I, I was thinking, you know, how is this going to translate itself to a full set? And and. Uh, you know, it, it will. You didn't think, do we have the budget for this? <laughs> yeah, well, I always think, do we have the budget for this? <laughs> I have to say that's so. your role, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. I want to take, pick you up on something that you just said before about young voices. or, or do, do, Did you want to say undeveloped voices, or is that really unfair to, to Oh, no, to no. I mean, like these, the, these are, um, when I talk about young, I talk about young in terms of the large scale operatic world. Mm. Um, they're, they're very careful. They recognize that human voice develops quite significantly as you grow older. And so, what the students are doing now, who are typically in their mid-20s, is that they've done their undergraduate degree, they've already had four years of vocal training, and to, you know, most people's ears, they'd sound pretty hot. Mm. But what we're doing now is uh, developing voices that will be able to withstand an operatic career. So they have uh, a, a lot of training in terms of, you know, what they actually do with their mouth, their vocal cords, how they take care of themselves. Mm. And putting the right opera on for them is very important because they want to learn the, the good music. Uh, but we also don't want to damage them for their future careers, but we want to prepare them appropriately for that. So for instance, I don't think we would ever do a Wagnerian opera. Mm. Just too big. You say damage, you mean it can actually harm... Oh yeah. Or did you, you, you just no, mean no. emotionally damaged? No, no, no. I, I really mean damaged. So, um, you know, if, if um, you're a parent like I've been, and you st- stood on the side of a soccer field and you've mm. shrieked out at your kid and said, you know, run faster, get that ball, yeah. um, you put a lot of effort to it. And at the end of the day, you know, just a half hour of watching a kid playing soccer, your throat can feel sore and razzed yeah. and terrible. But these students have to sing for hours uh, every day. Every day. Yeah. Um, so they have to learn how to um, produce a voice that's going to be able to withstand that and sound beautiful and not hoarse and terrible at the end of it yeah mm. Now our next uh, musical selection is oh well, first of all so when when's this um, when's Cosi Fan Tutte on it's on um, on it's on the eighth um, to the fifteenth of October um, and it's actually quite funny because the Australian Opera is also doing Cosi at the moment so I think you can go and have a look at ours and have a look at theirs and do a you know a, a comparison. <laughs> it is, but, but but is is your version of it a good chance for people? I mean, because dare I suggest um, tickets for the for Opera Australia are. Not cheap. Uh, oh, oh yes, ours is definitely the cost um, <laughs> cost worthy price option. But also, yeah. is, is 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 do do you are you also offering it almost as a way for people to say, well, look, I don't want to shell out hundreds of bucks if I don't know that I'm going to like it. Is is this a good entry? Oh, ab- entry absolutely, into opera? Ab- absolutely, and and. Um, our, our opera, of course, is on a smaller stage than the Opera House one, so it feels more like it would have done when it was created, mm. um, which was for a smaller audience. So it feels much more intimate. When when you watch the opera at our place, you're right there uh, with mm. the the young ones falling in love and their despicable, you know, friends, and you know, you you become very much more engaged than when you're, you know, in the Opera House, which is a, a big venue. I mean, that's engaging too, but in quite a different way. Yeah, I mean, but that that's actually an interesting point because so much of this music, all of this music, was written for like the spaces that they would have been performed in are, are often a fraction of the size yeah. than, than they performed yeah, in now. Yeah, that, that, that's right. And, uh, of course, when they were originally constructed, they were meant for the decor and the chairs and the furnishings and the people that were the audience, and it was yeah. all suitably designed. And what we have something is, you know, 300, 400 years later mm. um, that has a, a contemporary hall and a contemporary sound system and, and all of those sorts of things. So you have to try and um, help people suspend their belief. Um, mm. And so there's usually the tension do you do do you set the opera as it would have been set 
when it was originally performed, mm. or do you set it in a contemporary sense yes. and, and, and see how that goes? So, so, so that's you, always about tension. I'm, I'm not going to say it's oh. a secret. You can turn up and find out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually a great fan, uh, a big fan of moving the time period that these things are set because, yeah, it's really it can actually add an extra layer to it. That um, yeah, there, there, there was one very funny year when it was um, uh, the set design was like a computer game. Oh, um, so, so as it was a Purcell opera, which was really funny, and so as as the movement moved across the stage, actually the stage moved and the people all stood, you know, still sort of walking like oh, a, like, like, a, like, like almost a, in the center of the yeah, screen. Yeah, exactly. Oh, like, that's a yeah, brilliant it was idea. Really funny. Oh wow. Okay. Well, goodness knows what you're going to come up with this time. So that's uh, is. Cosi Fentute on at the Conservatorium uh, from the 8th to the 15th of October and uh, that website again to uh, find out about more about that and about everything else that's on at the con is sydney.edu.au slash music. Uh, now, we're going to hear a little bit more music now. Now, this widget, we can't hear the whole uh, piece because it's, it's like 50 minutes and I'm afraid that, <laughs> that will stretch the the ability of this program to cope with that. But um, it's uh, Lucifer's Tunes or a bit of Lucifer's Tunes from... Uh, uh, well, what's it, is this from, Anna? Can you elaborate uh, it, it's, slightly and then we'll hear it here a bit more in a well, moment? Well, it's, it's, it's from, um, I mean, the whole work is called Lucifer's Tance um, right. by Stockhausen. Um, but the most interesting thing about uh, this production uh, is that we're um, uh, juxtaposing it against a silent movie by Faust. So it, it's going to be a delight to, to the eyes and ears to hear. Um, but, but the most lovely thing about it too is, is that it, it gives the students quite a different experience of... Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I was going to say contemporary music, but it so isn't anymore. Music from la the last century. Uh, okay, any, anything from like 1918 is contemporary is, music, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have that debate another time. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, but but the, the bit that we've chosen uh, has this wonderful moment where pretty much all of the wind section is in unison. And you'd think that would be an easy thing for a young orchestra to do, but it isn't. Not so they much. have to be tight. Mm. Okay, yeah. well, let's, let's have a little bit of a listen. have to leave uh, Lucifer's Tunts there by Stockhausen. And Anna, that uh, that really is dark, isn't it? <laughs> it, it, it totally is. So the st students really like it, though. They yeah. um, learn something that's quite different because uh, John Lynch, who is their conductor, programs a, a really wide variety of experiences for that ensemble. And, mm. and uh, so they go from playing, you know, sort of dance music and, and it's it's kind of fun and uh, hoedown kind of American things. And then all of a sudden they have an experience of this where they have to use their ears, they really have to listen and they really have to count and they have to immerse themselves in the sound to be able to create the sound that everybody needs to work with. Um, and, you know, the other thing is that, that John likes to do extra bits. So uh, he corrals our other composers to create lightscapes uh, and to, mm. you know, suit the music. Ivan Zavada's work, for instance, will be up there. It's do, kind of fun. Do you find that um, the there are new, new devotees are created after the students 
get immersed in this sort of music? Do they, do they see this music in a different light than they might have seen it before? Oh, totally. Uh, it's um, uh, young people you think would know everything, um, but often... Well, they like to think so. Well, they like to think they know everything. <laughs> um, and, and the sorts of experiences that they have with music at school or with the youth orchestras is quite different from the range of music that can be um, uh, played once an orchestra gets to a particular level. Mm. So they're experiencing music... Um, which is quite difficult uh, because they can do it. And uh, it's a new world for them. And running alongside that, our musicology department will be teaching them about what that period was about. So, mm. for instance, the Stockhausen uh, time, you know, that, that's the time when the whole of Europe was, you know, going from one war to the next. Mm. Um, so everybody either knew somebody who'd been in the darkest p- pits of hell or m- were moving into it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a dark part, part mm. of dark rituals, and dark indeed, and that's uh, Wind Symphony... Uh, performance on Thursday the 25th of August yeah uh, so get along to um, uh, to sydney.edu.au slash music uh, to find out more about that one uh, now you you said that you know modern you know what's contemporary music was maybe a debate for another time but we might be about to um, visit that now because you've got a modern music ensemble Oh, we do. Uh, doing some, some work. So what? How, when when does that kick in? When does the modern music ensemble... Well, well we, 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 we like to think, think modern music is living... Modern music is living composers. Okay. Um, and, and so pretty much our modern music ensemble will be playing uh, the music of the people who will also be sitting in the audience listening to their own music being performed. Very good, right. Um, so, um, you know... Do they get critiqued later? Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, well, over a drink afterwards, there's always a, a, a big critique. Um, oh. So so I, I think there's a, a you know just a flowering of compositional work in Sydney at the moment yeah. it, that, that's just totally stunning so for the next modern music ensemble we've got a student composer Jeremy Rose um, he might be just finished actually he's a marvellous young composer um, Paul Stanhope who everybody knows and loves um, mm. Elena katz Chernan and Ross Edwards and, and happily all of these people are, um, are members of our faculty and or working with us closely or alumni uh, so, that, so they're names and people we know and so they're the experience for students is that they're working usually with the composers um, that have got the works there as, as well as working working as a team. So they're, they're having quite a different experience. For um, m- most musicians these days will want to find a taming composer um, to create the music of now. Uh, mm. In, you know, 100 years' time, they'll be looking back at that and saying, what a strange so- set of sounds they were. Mm. Mm. So uh, <laughs> what offerings do you have um, for um, or from Indigenous um students and Indigenous composers? Oh, well, well, we have a fabulous program, and that's actually coming up very soon. I, th- I think it's the 12th of... August on a Saturday afternoon, three o'clock. Um, uh, the conservatorium students and Indigenous music students uh, team up together uh, to uh, workshop music for a week. Uh, so they're creating, they're writing, um, they're working together, and then they present a concert in the afternoon. Uh, it, it's a fabulous initiative because it also runs totally in with our new contemporary music course. Uh, so it, it, it shows um, pretty much how the conservatorium's expanding to be a Sydney, Australian-based institution Mm. uh, where we uh, work uh, with musicians who've got a whole range of different backgrounds. So this particular initiative has been now going for three years uh, and each year takes a different flavour. So this year is uh, contemporary music practice and uh, so you'll be hearing original songs from um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, musicians mm-hmm. who are predominantly young and aspiring to great careers. Fantastic. Now, it's not all uh, performed in the Verbruggen Hall. Uh, you've got some stuff here I see in the University the, the University of Sydney's Great Hall, which uh, makes for a nice... Um, Yes. Change of venue, I guess. Yeah, well, well uh, we are part of Sydney University, of course, mm. and uh, make use of it. We, we do make use <laughs> of it, and uh, you know, a large number of our courses are taught up there as well. Uh, so it's not so distant from down near the Opera House, uh, but the Great Hall's a great venue. So we try to make sure that we service the university and Glebe Newtown areas by putting concerts up there quite often. Mm. Uh, so. Pretty much the next concert they're getting is the best of our best. Um, so we've, we've just had a group of amazing students head off to Italy for the Estiva Summer Festival, and the students who are playing in this are the ones who've just come back. So they've had two-week intensive program uh, where they were pretty good when they started and are astonishing now with the works that they're going to play. So, again, a fr- totally free lunchtime concert. Uh, you should just walk in the door and, and, and come and listen to that. Mm. 
Well, Anna, I have to say that there's, there's so much going on at the con that we're, we're going to have to struggle to fit it all in now. But if we can quickly sort of uh, run through some of the other things you've got going, you've got the early music ensemble, which I suppose is the opposite of the modern music ensemble, dare I say. Well, they're still dealing with students with new sounds that they hadn't really heard before heard? Oh, on, okay. on instruments to them that are totally new, new and and, yes. uh, uh, and uh, react in sort of really peculiar ways, as uh, gut strings and odd bows do, and uh, kirtles with weird mouthpieces. Uh, but yes, our, our um, early music ensemble gives students a chance to work on historically informed practice. So they do all of the research on how it is the music should have been played in those days and how it is they can manage to manipulate and organise that sound in a continuous contemporary environment. They're going on tour shortly. They're heading out to Bathurst Orange and the Blue Mountains at the end of the semester. Busiest time of the semester, but the best time for concerts. Is that an important part of uh, the cons role, do you think, doing those sorts of regional tours? Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, totally. Um, We're absolutely committed to supporting regional music and the regional conservatorium. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a developing program with the regional cons, which means we get out into regional schools and and concert halls and, you know, um, the old arts centre halls that are built in every regional town. And we'll be doing more and more of that as the years go by. Well, Anna, before I let you go, I'm going to need to get you to explain what it is that we're hearing in the background here and and why. Okay, so we're um, hearing Stravinsky's Symphony of Psalms. Yep. And uh, what we really love to do is try and get as many of our students to work together as possible. So uh, this work gives us a chance to get the big choir, the chamber choir, a couple of soloists and the symphony orchestra all playing together. And it's really important for the students to understand that as musicians we all work together and contribute to each other's education. So the Symphony of Psalms is the most beautiful piece of music for choirs and it'll make your body all tingle and your hairs rise at the back of your neck. (laughs) Uh, You'll probably be hearing that now. Uh, But it's one of those lovely things because uh, uh, it's it's interesting how students react. So earlier this week I heard somebody say, uh, do you play Pokemon? And another student saying, no, I play Stravinsky. (laughs) (laughs) So it's just a lovely moment of, of togetherness, bringing everybody together. Well, that sounds absolutely awesome. And I can say that the hairs on the back of my neck are definitely standing up uh, from what I'm hearing now. But Anna Reid, Dean of the Sydney Conservatorium of Music, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. And that's all from this edition of Arts in Focus. I'm Simon Moore. Bye for now.